Hi, I'm Daniel Andrews, owner and creator of the DAN Show, and welcome to my latest 2021 NFL Mock Draft video. Today, I'm going to break down the Buffalo Bills and what they're going to do with the 30th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft. Now, if you're new here and you're a draft fan, welcome home. This is the place to be. Go ahead, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. That way you're notified every time I release a new video. If you've been here before, you already know the drill. Drop a comment below. Let me know what your opinion is. I'm giving you mine. I want to hear from you and give me the thumbs up. Now, let's break down the bills. Last year, uh, Buffalo traded their first round pick uh, to Minnesota for uh, Stefan Diggs. And, and at the time, I thought this was a big mistake. I thought Buffalo really took a swing and a miss here. I thought they gave up way too much draft compensation for, for a receiver who wasn't that good. I was way off on this as a big mistake because you got a team that went from losing a wild card to going to an AFC championship game. And I think that they're going to use the same attitude and, and approach in this draft and that they're not trying to beat the Patriots, win a wild card game. No, they're trying to win a Super Bowl and they're ready. They're poised. This is a team that's Super Bowl ready. So this draft, this pick is going to be an impact pick. Now, a lot of teams, what they like to do is draft for the future. I don't think that's what Buffalo is going to do in this draft. I think they're going to use this draft pick here at 30 to draft an impact player. Now, Buffalo was second in scoring offense last year, but they were 16th in scoring defense. So let's look at the defensive side of the ball first. When you're looking for impact players, uh, you could look at Caleb Farley. Uh, this is a guy before his back surgery. A lot of mock drafts had him going in the top 10, myself included. So uh, you could get him at 30, and it would be really good draft value. Uh, keep in mind, with the Buffalo Bills, they're not really caring about the regular season, so he doesn't have to start right away. With a guy like Farley, you're only worried, is he healthy for the playoffs? Because more than likely, you're probably running to Kansas City again, who's a passing team with multiple receivers. Uh, so having Farley available and healthy for the playoffs would be your number one concern. So drafting him at 30 um, does make a lot of sense. You could also look at Elijah Molden. And the best part about drafting a guy like Molden is he helps you immediately on special teams. He can play inside. He can play outside. You could actually get extremely creative uh, with Molden. Play him at free safety a little bit if you wanted to do that. Uh, personally, if it's between these two players, I would actually take Molden over Farley because of the scheme versatility. Now, Sean McDermott doesn't really do that. His defense is, by NFL standards, pretty simple and basic. So they don't really have a position where, like, I can't say he has the honey badger who moves all over the field. You could do the same thing with Molden, but traditionally, Sean McDermott hasn't really done that. So I kind of think that they would pass on a player like Molden here whose scheme versatility would uh, really benefit, I think, a different type of defense better. Uh, a player I have yet to mention in any one of my videos, but uh, Javon Holland out of Oregon, most teams consider him a, a safety. I think he could actually play corner. He's, he's got good size, 6'1", 200. Uh, not great speed, which would worry a lot of teams, but I think with Buffalo, he would play corner. Uh, you may want to try him out at corner, move him to free safety if you wanted to. Um, I think he does offer some scheme versatility. I think in Buffalo, Holland would actually play corner, and he's, he's a big physical guy, and that would really work out well for the Bills. Now, I mentioned a couple players that have scheme versatility. You could also go with Trevon Morig, who really provides really good draft value, especially here at 30, but let's say you do want to replace Micah Hyde down the line. Yeah, you could do that. But what kind of an impact would, would Morg really have this year? Because Hyde's a pretty good player. So let's say you do want to move on from him. You want to add an upgrade. You think Morg's an upgrade. It's, it's unusual to play three safeties. I mean, you could do it. But how much of an impact would it have this year? The, the answer is it really wouldn't give you the type of spark that you would need uh, to help propel you into a Super Bowl. Uh, when I look at the Buffalo Bills, if I'm adding an impact player, 
I'm looking at the defensive line because my two leading sackers last year had five each, all right, which is okay. But you're trying to win a Super Bowl, so you need a little better than okay. You got 38 sacks as a, as a total last year. Again, respectable, but your goal is to win a Super Bowl, not just be a, a wild card team. So if I'm, if I'm the Bills and I'm using this draft pick on an impact player, I'm looking at pass rusher here. If I'm looking at a pass rusher, I'm kind of looking at two players here. Uh, first is a Levi uh, Ozer Ike. Now, Ozer Ike uh, would play defensive tackles, not really a pure pass rusher, but bottom line, Ed Oliver uh, was chosen ninth overall two years ago. He has a total of eight sacks. Uh, he was seen as the second coming of Aaron Donald. He's really just not that good of a player, to be perfectly honest. Drafting uh, Ozerike here, you would basically kind of rotate him and Oliver in and out of the lineup. But the one issue with Ozerike is that he would have to have an impact early. Uh, he would have to be an early starter. He doesn't have to be a day one starter, but he has to contribute and contribute quite a bit uh, often. But um, I would more look at uh, Greg Rousseau. Now, here's the issue. Uh, the Bills' starting defensive ends are going to be 34 and 33 when the season starts. Uh, they got a combined nine and a half sacks between them. A guy like Gregory Rousseau with a big upside uh, would be a good fit here. He's only 20 to six foot seven kid out of Miami. I think would have a huge impact on this team, even though he wouldn't have to be a day one starter. You could just build him into the defense gradually. Uh, the one issue I would have uh, with both of these players is that both of them sat out of uh, college football last year. So, um, how much of an impact would they have this year? And and that's a big question because if you're the Bills, I think you need an impact player. You can't have a question of how much of an impact will he have. You, ha you have to know that with a player drafted here, he's got to have a big impact. So with no trades in this mock, let's look at the offensive side here because of the players that are going to contribute and contribute big, I think you got to go on the offensive side. You could take a look at Pat Freermuth, uh, the tight end out of Penn State, because this is about where he should go, late first round, early second round. The question I have as Freermuth is that would he really be able to wrestle the job away from Dawson Knox, a player that I really like who's very talented. Uh, bottom line, a guy like Freermuth would, would definitely help, but um, would he be a starter and how much of an impact uh, would he have? Uh, the Bills last year drafted Gabriel Davis, and he really had a major impact, seven receiving touchdowns, just one behind uh, Stephon Diggs. So you're good at wide receiver. Uh, Freer Meth could be the pick, but I'm not sure he starts. The player I think the Bills take right here at 30 will start day one. With the 30th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft... The Buffalo Bills select Najee Harris running back out of Alabama. If Harris is gone, you could easily go uh, Travis Etienne. And when you have Singletary and Moss already on the roster, Etienne might actually be a better fit. Etienne adds more explosiveness and more big playability. But the difference is between the two is I think Harris is easily ranked higher. And I firmly believe that the second Harris signs an NFL contract, he's, he immediately becomes one of the best 10 to 12 running backs in the National Football League. I'm not sure you can say that uh, with Travis Etienne. Another issue is that Harris is going to be able to handle about 400 touches as a rookie. Travis Etienne is not. I can see Travis Etienne doing about 250. Now keep in mind, uh, you could be a great running back and not have 400 touches. Alvin Kamara had 270 touches last year. So a running back having about 250 touches can still be a great player and an impact player. But if you're the Buffalo Bills, you had 16 rushing touchdowns last year. Josh Allen had eight. You can't have that. <laughs> you can't have your leading scorer on the ground be your quarterback. You you have a quarterback who had a great year, an MVP caliber year, 
you look, a quarterback running like Josh Allen looks great on highlight reels. It looks fantastic on ESPN. You don't want that, though, if you're a Bills fan. You want them handing off the ball and throwing touchdowns, not getting additional punishment. That's unnecessary. With a guy like Najee Harris, you eliminate that. You help keep Josh Allen clean. And with, jo- with Najee Harris, you get a three-down back. Even though he's a bigger guy, he's got excellent receiving ability. Yes, he's not uh, quite the threat as Travis Etienne, but you can give him the ball 25, 30 times, and you don't have to really worry about it. Now, if you do want big playability, I'd go with Travis Etienne. Now, I think it's going to be one of these two players, Harris over Etienne, um, in my book. However, if the Bills did go Etienne, I wouldn't blame them at all. He's a player I really like. I just have Najee Harris as my number one running back. He would be a day one starter for the Bills and instantly becomes a top 10 to 12 running back the day he signs his NFL contract. So listen, did you like this pick? Did you hate this pick? Did you boo me, Bills fans, Bills Mafia? You tell me. Did you like the pick? Did you hate it? Most importantly, drop a comment below. Let me hear from you. I want to hear what your opinion is. I already gave you mine in this video. So Let me hear what you think the Bills are going to do with the 30th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft. Now, tomorrow, I'm going to break down the Kansas City Chiefs and what they're going to do with the 31st pick in the NFL Draft. So, hey, I will see you tomorrow.